Hello and welcome back to another video with me, Rusty. Um, today we are going to look at uh, uh, something slightly different. We're going to step away from EVE on a bit of EVE uh, gameplay and we're going to focus on a web application called Pathfinder. If you're new to EVE, you probably might not have heard of this, um, but basically what it is, it's a, uh, a website you can log into that will help you track uh, your progress through systems and uh, wormholes. Um, basically, a lot, a lot of wormholers use this system because it helps track um, their wormholes. It will daisy chain and breadcrumb it, basically, and they can manage their SIGs and stuff a lot better. So it's a really useful tool. Uh, it's good to get familiar with early on, um, especially if you're going to be planning on doing a lot of wormholing or JSpace. Um, it just helps you organize stuff out. So this is the public, publicly available one at the um, address here. I will link it in the description just in case you don't know it. Uh, you can obviously Google it, but this is the public one. Um, so you basically come here, you log in, and then you can start building out your maps and, and progressing from there. So what we are basically going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to set up your own personal Pathfinder. Because what basically you'll find is that the public one can be a little slow, a little unresponsive, uh, it can take a while to update. Um, also, from what I understand it, they wipe their data every so often. Um, so with, with your own one, you have a lot faster speeds and you get to keep the data for as long as you want. So to set this up, there are a couple of um, caveats and requirements. So obviously you need something or somewhere to set up your e-online server. This can be an old laptop that you might be not using anymore, an old desktop, your old gaming machine, or something like that, or something that basically can be left on. Um, and obviously, of course, if you want, you can set it up online in Azure or AWS, um, Linode, any one of those kind of services, you can set it up there. I will be doing mine on-prem. Uh, I have a Proxmox server, so I will be creating a um, Linux container and I'll be uh, running it on there. Uh, the installation we're going to be following actually uses Docker and Docker Compose, so you, um, you don't really have to be too familiar with it because the guide is actually quite useful and quite clear on what you need to do, but we'll go through it, but you will need Docker and Docker Compose. Um, and the, uh, the last thing you'll need is um, an account that has um, had Omega time. Uh, so you've, you've paid for Omega or you've, you've used Plex to get it omega which we'll, uh, we'll discuss in just a short while. So like I said, we're going to be using Docker and Docker Compose. So the first place you're going to want to go is to uh, GitHub. Uh, this address, again, I'll link this in the description. Um, and then basically there is a nice um, repository here for using Docker and Docker Compose. So it's very nice and neatly laid out. Um, you just basically follow the instructions and change the things you need to change, which we'll go through. Um, and then there's a couple of steps. Once the server is set up and running, you need to log into the setup side and um, just do a couple of things to get the data databases set up and then you're, you're good to go. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to come down here and set up the API key. Now this is where you need an account that's got or had a mega. This is a requirement put in place by the EVE Online Development Portal. Basically if you haven't got an account that's had a mega you cannot you sign in to the developer portal. There is as far as I'm aware there's no way around this. It's one of their requirements so please make sure you have an account that you've had a mega on. But basically what you'll do is we're going to click on this link it will open up to this page. Um, all you do is click on Manage Applications. It'll ask you to sign in with your EVE Online account, and then it will bring you back to this page. Now, I'm already signed in, but I've, I've blurred it out, so that's my main character, and I don't want to share that just yet. Um, so basically, yeah, when you come back here, we'll click on Manage Applications, and you'll be presented with a screen that looks similar to this. Yours will not have this part here because this is my production Pathfinder. This is the one I'm using for myself. Um, you will just have this top box here where it's your applications. So what you need to do then is you need to click on create new application, give it a name. 
Uh, give it a description if you want. Well, you have to because it's got the star, so you have to give it a description. So once you fill them in, you come down, you select authentication and API access because we need to give um, the API, uh, we need to set up the API um, access, which is what we're going to do now. So we're going to go back here and the restrictions we need to add are all of these here. So basically, however you want to do this, but basically I just copy and paste all of these. So you copy it and paste it into here, select it, it moves it across and you basically go down the list copying and pasting all of these. So we're going to do that. Take your time, make sure you get everything correct. I wish they used the, the uh, copy function so you could just click to copy, but uh, there we go. So this one and one more. Yeah, don't forget to click it once you've pasted it back in, otherwise it won't move across. So there we go. So you, we, we've copied and pasted all of them in and we've moved them across here. So that is now, now complete. I'm just going to maximize this again so we can see better. Um, so you come back down. So the callback URL. Now this is important. Um, if this isn't correct, it won't talk back to the... Uh, well, it will talk to the EVE Online servers for authentication, but it won't actually route back to your your application, your server. So you need to make sure you put this in correctly. Now this can be, this is basically the URL you're going to use. So you will, again, actually that's another requisite. You will need a domain. Um, you will need a domain for this. So basically put in the domain URL that you want to use. Now the, uh, the example we're going to copy, we're actually, we're just going to copy this here. back, paste that in, and then from the slash to the slash, we're going to delete your domain, including the brackets, and we're going to put in uh, our address. So that it looks like this. So you make sure this is correct. So it should be HTTPS your domain and your whatever subdomain you want to use here so um, basically once you've got that create application and then once you've done that you'll be taken back to this screen here now what you need to do as it says in the uh you can close this one down um we're going to need to get the um where is it where is it where is it the single sign on tokens here for these for this entries here so we need to get the client id and the secret key so if we go back to our application you click on view application um, and basically here it is so you've got your client id so literally we are just going to open up notepad and we are going to copy this and we are going to copy this. Uh, and I will actually, I'm, I'm just going to copy the callback URL just in case we need it. Like so. Now, when you're doing this, please don't let anyone see your client ID or your secret key. For me, it's not important because once I've done this video, I'm going to be deleting this server. So um, no one can, um, well, I'll be deleting the server and this key. Um, so it's not a problem, but for you guys, obviously make sure you keep all this stuff, um, secret basically, because if they get this, they can, you're in trouble. Um, so that's it. Basically, once you've done that, you can log out we can close that. 
Um, I'm going to actually bring back so it's all in one nice little tab for us. So next step basically what we need to do is we need to go over to our server so here's mine. Um, first thing you want to do after you've launched it and gone in is you need to do an app get update ampersand ampersand at get upgrade if I can spell and then dash y this will basically go through download any updates you need um, and apply them and the dash y stops the prompt so as you can see I've already updated mine and we are we are good to go there so I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to install Docker and Docker Compose. You can um, there, there's uh, obviously install instructions on their sites and stuff like that. So you can either use that or you install it however you like to install it. I like to use a nifty little command uh, that I found, which will basically do everything kind of for you once it's found out a bit of information. So, if, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do um, we're going to make a new directory. Um, and we're going to call it Docker. So we're doing ls, we can see that there. So we changed into Docker. ls is going to be empty, right? Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to this GitLab page. Again, I'll have this linked in the uh, description below, but basically it's a very short script that will um, go through and install. Uh, Docker and Compose, um, uh, Docker obviously as well, and also have you, it tells you here, look, so you've got NG, uh, Nginx Proxy Manager if you want it, um, and Portainer uh, CE, so it's the Community Edition. So it will ask you if you want to install these. Obviously, we're only going to be interested in installing these two, but I'll show you how this works anyway. Um, so what we are actually going to do is we're just going to open up this one in a new tab. We are literally not going to do that. I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to copy that. We'll go back here. So we're going to do a docker dash install. So we're going to come over here and go nano docker dash install dot sh. That gives us a new file. Now, obviously, you can use Nano, Veeam, VI, whatever text editor you want to use, but you'll need one. We're going to paste in everything we just copied. Uh, we're going to control X, uh, yes, and yes. So if you now do an ls, you'll have docker install.sh. To make it executable, we need to um, run this command here, which is cmod. Again, this is just copy and paste. If you do an ls, you can now see it's executable, and then to run that, you just do um, my mind's gone blank. No, I was wrong, so you just run this command here. So we're going to do that, paste that run that. So you'll get this, it basically figures out what kind of OS you're running. I'm doing this on Ubuntu 22.4, um, 04.3, stable edition. So you come down here and we will select number four. Do I want to install Docker CE? Yes. Do I want to install Compose? Yes. Do I want to school, uh, install Nginx Proxy Manager? No. Do I, I don't want to do that one either. Retainer, no. And remote desktop, no. Quite primarily, no. So this will now go through, download what we need, and it will then go and install it for us. So depending on how long this takes, I might cut to when it's finished. Right, okay. So there's mine uh, installed and, um, or downloaded and installed. So we can actually do Docker Yes, and we can see Docker is now running. Um, what it does say is uh, 
I was about to clear it, but we can. You know, what you'll need to do is you'll need to log back, at, log out, and log back in with the same user that you're in, just to make sure that the that user is added to the Docker group. So that is exactly what I'm just about to uh, do. Uh, I will need to exit this and exit this, and then I will do R to restart the session. sudo-s there we go so we're back in we're going to change directory in my docker container my folder that i created that's the folder in there and then if i do a docker again ps we can see it's running um, if you want to do a reboot here you can um, it shouldn't be necessary but you know never hurts right so now we've got docker docker and docker compose set up on our server our server is up to date we can go back to the GitHub page here. So what it's asking us to do is to clone the repo. So literally come here, copy it, right click, paste it, however you want to paste it in, and then enter. Again, this might take a little bit of time. Wait for it to download all of this stuff basically just copying everything that is all the files that are located on that repository and just sticking them in a folder for us. Right, okay, and that's uh, that's now finished. So if we do an ls, we can see there is another folder called Pathfinder Containers. So we're going to clear this and we will change directory into that folder, so CD into it, and then let you can list it. And there's all your all the files we need to, to that Pathfinder needs. So we're going to head back to the repository. So we've now done this. Now we need to actually edit the .env file. So this you can um, fill out as you need fit. So the ones that you need to do is obviously you need to fill in your domain name here. The domain you're going to be using, so it's going to be um, whatever that is for you. The app password, this is what's going to let us log into the setup part once Pathfinder is running to configure the databases. Again, keep this safe and secret, make it a nice, strong, secure password. Uh, you can leave all of these as default here, so these ones can all be left as default. This one here, again, is the database password, so again, pick a nice, secure, strong one and don't share it. Um, and then the um, the uh, CCP SSO client details are the ones we actually copied and pasted from earlier. Um, and that is basically it, all that all we need to fill in and change. Um, you can change the container name if you want. Um, and the project root is actually it tells you what to do down here. So if you do PW, it will then uh, give you the full list. So we'll. We'll go through and do that. So we need to edit the EMV file. So we'll go back to our server and we'll do nano dot EMV. We don't want the example. We just want the uh, actually. Let's first just make sure that uh, it's there. Yeah. Okay. So it is not listed there. One second. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is so it says basically says to copy this the example, make sure you have the entry. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to do a nano dot env. Hit enter. We're going to go back to the GitHub page and we're going to copy this, paste it in, and then here we are going to uh, actually we're going to close and. Do a save that, and then what we need to do is do a pwd. This is the container string that we need, so make sure you copy this. Right, and then we're going to do nano.env again in the project part here. Project root. Make sure you copy and paste in yours. The Docker container name, I'm actually going to change mine to 
Pathfinder, just so it's more obvious for me. Domain is going to be Pathfinder. Like so, app password. Okay, this is again what we can, I'm just going to make a note of this. So, go back to this. So, I just made a note of the password in my in, <laughs> in notepad. Uh, in, in, uh, yeah, notepad because we're going to need this layer. So, yeah, it's literally. Make sure you get it in brackets. Um, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Again, here, you wanna put in a nice secure password. Do not copy my ones, because they are not secure. Right, now we come down to the client IDs. So we're gonna go back to our client IDs that we copied earlier, paste that one there. And then the SSO secure key, secret key, we put that in there. Again, don't worry, I'll be deleting this so it won't be available. This is fine, this is all fine, don't worry about this. Uh, again, don't worry about any of this. Now, SMTP hosts, um, this whole section here is if you want to set up the email side of it. I'm not going to do that, it's not necessarily needed. Um, if you want to, just go ahead and fill it in with your SMTP details. Obviously, you can get them from Google and stuff like that. So once you fill this in like it is, Control X again, Y to save, Enter, and then if we LS, you're not going to see them because they are a hidden file because they're a dot. But if we do um, LS dash A for all, we can see our EMV file is is there. So again, we we'll go back to GitHub. Um, you can configure the any file if you want to. Um, the only thing that I've touched is the uh, Pathfinder name here. Um, it's just the title that comes across the top here. So if you wanted to, I mean, I can show you this later. Um, but that's the only thing I would change. Everything else was um, left as default. So the next we're going to actually build and run it. So we are going to copy this here, we're going to go back to our server, we're going to paste that in and we're going to watch it pull these down and build the containers. Again this might take a little bit of time so uh, I will probably speed this up and I will join you once it's done. Okay and we're done. So basically you should get all of these, it goes through all green ticks and let you know it's all been installed and then it's all been created and started. So if we now do a docker ps, you can see our containers are uh, running, are up and running. So they are up and running and they are listening to the these ports. Now, I should have said this uh, at the start of the video but there's a few more things that you'll need to do in order to get this working. So technically right now, Pathfinder should be up and working uh, and, and running. What you'll need to do is you will need to obviously point your domain name to the server. So I use Cloudflare, so I've, I've pointed my uh, domain name to my my own external IP address and um, that goes through there. Um, so you'll have to do the same for yours. Um, so even if you were using cloud or on-premise, you'll need to make sure that you point the domain at that server. Um, now, this isn't gonna affect the guys who are running, who have done this on, on in, in the cloud, um, but um, this service uses HTTPS, so port 443, um, so most, common routers and uh, modems and stuff uh, you can only assign um, one port to one service basically because we need 443 if you're running anything else on port 443 it won't work so you'll have to set up a reverse proxy now I use HA proxy which is part of the um, OpenSense firewall that I run 
Um, so I use HAProxy to do the port forwarding. Um, on your routers, you will need to um, find a guide somewhere that will talk you through how to do port forwarding. But basically, you need to port you need to put port forward. I'm trying to say that ten times faster. Uh, you need to port forward port four four three to your server's IP address if you're running this locally. Uh, if you've only, only got the one service, i.e. Pathfinder, this one Pathfinder running, then you don't need to worry about it. Just port forward 443 to the, your server's IP address uh, and uh, or your device's IP address, and you'll be good to go. If you are using 443 or something, then you'll need a reverse proxy setting up. So I, like I said, I use HA proxy, which is part of OpenSense. Um, you can use um, the one that this guy runs. Um, let's see if we can play that. Uh, which is en uh, Nginx Proxy Manager, which is really good. It's really simple once it's been set up to actually use it. Um, this guy himself has a uh, a decent uh, has a great YouTube channel that focuses on open source software. So um, I will I'll I'll link his I'll link the YouTube video and how to set up Proxy Manager in the description. If not, you can just Google how to set up. Nginx proxy manager and you, you can find some but if you're already using 443 you will need a reverse proxy so at this point we've got pathfinder working um i'm actually just going to go away and quickly set up my ha proxy because i've not um i've not done that yet I, I pointed the domain but i didn't i forgot to set up my reverse proxy so uh i'm going to be back in, in a couple of minutes uh for you it's going to be instant but um yeah i will be back once i've got my reverse proxy set up Right, back, sorry about that. So um, yeah, it took me a little bit longer than what I was expecting um, because I made a slight mistake in the uh, environment file. So what I needed to do for me was change the file, uh, the main name. I had to remove the HTTPS forward slash, colon forward slash, forward slash, and it's just literally the domain name. So you remove that, save it, and then you should, um, what you'll have to do after that, you'll have to run the following commands here, which is docker compose down, which brings down all the containers. And then followed by that, docker compose up dash build dash D. And that will recreate all your containers for you. And then you should be all set to go. Um, so once you've done that, we can actually go over to it and we go to the address. You type in the address that you want, you're using. And it brings it up to our our own Pathfinder. Now we're not completely uh, not completely done yet. So what we need to do is we actually need to put in a four shaft set up at the end, and then we'll get a login page. So this is pf followed by the password that you set in the environment folder. Uh, Oh, which I just used the wrong one because I'm an idiot. So we'll do this, that one. There we go. Look at the right username as well. So sign in. And this is basically the back end for Pathfinder. So there's a lot of stuff here that is uh, alerting us. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to go to the databases. So if we click databases here, it's these pads here. So they don't currently exist. So what you need to do is click create database, create database. Set up tables. You'll get some warnings and stuff like that. And then you go fix columns. That's that done. Same thing here, set up databases. And same thing, fix columns. Uh, and that's now our databases created. Uh, this stuff here, don't worry about because we didn't actually fill these in. If you did, you won't have these. Um, and basically, as you can see now, we're uh, pretty much good to go. So these are optional. You don't have to worry about these. I mean, you can do them if you want to. I, I haven't bothered, and it's been running fine. So if we go down to administration, we've got a couple more errors down here. And basically, all you need to do is just import all of these one by one. So 
this can take a little bit of time, so I will skip ahead until it's done. Okay, um, that's it. So this should now be everything we need to get uh, our Empath Finder uh, server set up. So obviously what we need to do is we go back here. You can see if you go, you know, scroll down, you can see the differences between the two. Like I said, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, but uh, that is here. So the next test will be actually to see if the um, count login works. So basically, if we click here, it should redirect us. You can accept whatever I always dismiss. It should take us to your login page. So um, I'm just going to log in here. So once you put in your login details, you'll be at your character selection screen. So this is one of my alts. So select, cl uh, click the portrait you want, click authorize. This is telling you this, this is basically all the permissions we added at the very first step. So um, you click authorize. And you are now logged in to Pathfinder. So because we don't have a map currently available, it will ask you to create one. So I'm just going to call this test because I'm not keeping it. So uh, again, you can change the scopes if you want. You can change the icons. Uh, I, again, mainly, it's mainly used for my worm holders. So I leave mine to worm holders. And if you want, you can have it private or corporation. For, if you're a single player or solo player, then obviously private is fine. If you're a corporation, then change the corporation then and, and set it up as you want. Obviously, if you're used to using Pathfinder, you don't need me to tell you this. Um, but anyway, once you've got everything you want, click Save. Let's give it a minute to load up. And we are... We're done. This is uh, Pathfinder. Um, we can, over here, we have our Fera connection, which is, uh, I will actually be doing a video about uh, Fera connections and how we can use it to travel around LOSEC. Right, so before we can actually start using Pathfinder properly, there is actually one more, well, a couple more steps that we need to do uh, to, to, to wrap this up. So if you were to try and use it, uh, Pathfinder now, it actually wouldn't work um properly uh you wouldn't be able to get the displays and stuff that you would normally be used to so the first thing we want to do actually is just sign out uh of of, uh, of pathfinder we want to go back to our github page and there is a part down here um uh, here it is just beneath the build and run you need to copy this part here so we're just going to copy this Go back to our server, we'll paste that in, hit enter, and then that will be that should be it finished now. So now if we go back to our our Pathfinder, we sign in, uh, we authorize our user that we want. Okay, we're back. So now, now if we go into, um, if you go to add like Fera here, which is a really good bit of a uh, wormhole space. That actually, we need to. I, I shall be doing some videos on this because this is actually a really interesting. I've never used it before, but it's basically a, a a wormhole system that links to other parts of the Eve map. So we're going to look at Fera and um, and how to use it uh, and safely. But if we get, click add and we just click save, we now it now adds in Fera. We can click on this and it actually loads up all the details for Fera. Uh, so you can see the kill board, how many you, you know recent kills, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the security status. Um, these again, these list out all of the wormholes that lead to it, all that are in it. And uh, yeah, this, then that's it. Basically, Pathfinder is set up and running. Uh, you can add other um, other systems as well. If you wanted to add like Jita, for example, uh, G I T. Sorry, I can't spell. Select that. Uh, save. Click on that, and we get the K 
kill board for for Vegeta and everything else. So that's it. We can we can end it there. That like I said, there are a couple more. There was one more step really that we want to do, um, and then that's it. I swear we are. I promise we're done. Um, so again, if we minimize this, uh, we'll clear this. We'll go back to the GitHub page. What we need to do, uh, we just need to remove the the Acme JSON, um, which is stored in the Let's Encrypt folder. So if we go to our server and we go ls, um, and we go to change directory to Let's Encrypt, do another ls, it's this file right here. So all you need to do is rm, just type ac and tab and it'll bring up that file. Hit enter, do an ls, make sure it's gone. And that's it, we can go back to the root directory and we are now finished. So, yeah, we have our own Pathfinder server running. It uh, It's pulling in live data. Again, I, I'm not currently logged into EVE, but if you were, it would tell you what system your current character is and it will map. Um, I plan, I've, no, I've actually not really used Pathfinder. Um, I'm very new to it. I've literally just set it up. Um, I'm currently waiting for some skills to train before I start doing what I want to do. Um, but there will be some videos on this to come. So, you know, I hope you join me for them and uh, we can learn together on how to use Pathfinder and how useful it can be. Um, but that's it. That's that's how you install it. Um, obviously, uh, you can change the, the names. Uh, so if we were to sign out back here, log out, you can change this name um, by editing that file we spoke about. Um, but it's not necessarily important. But uh, that's it. I'm going to stop rambling now. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Um, I, if, if you've not come across Pathfinder, check it out um, and uh, see what you think. But um, yeah, let me know if you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any problems um, with the install, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to try and help you out uh, where I can. But uh, I'm going to end it here. Um, but you guys enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are and fly safe and I will catch you in the next video.